My name is Alon Khan, and I'm an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'd like to thank the GIE Editorial Board for the opportunity to present our study entitled Outcomes of Radiofrequency Ablation by Manual versus Self-Sizing Circumferential Balloon Catheters for the Treatment of Dysplastic Barrett's Esophagus, a Multicenter Comparative Cohort Study. Now, radiofrequency ablation is really the mainstay of endoscopic eradication therapy for Barrett's esophagus, particularly with dysplasia or intramucosal adenocarcinoma following resection of any visible lesions. RFA has been uh, subjected to randomized control trials and other studies which have consistently shown uh, efficacy and safety of this ablative technique. For patients with long or circumferential segments of Barrett's esophagus, RFA typically begins with circumferential ablation, followed by focal ablation during subsequent sessions to ablate any remaining areas of Barrett's esophagus. The initial system for ablation and circumferentially uh, was introduced in 2006 and involved separate uh, sizing and ablation steps. So initially a sizing balloon was introduced, uh, the diameter of the esophagus was ascertained at various levels, and then a fixed size ablation catheter was chosen based on those measurements and introduced for the ablation step. In 2016, a self-sizing balloon catheter system was released in which the steps were combined into a single catheter which automatically inflated and opposed uh, the lining of the esophagus uh, and then delivered the energy directly without the need for a separate step. Uh, while this new self-sizing system promised enhanced efficiency, uh, it was never directly compared uh, in terms of safety or efficacy uh, to the existing manual sizing uh, system. Therefore, uh, the aim of this study was for us to use a large database of patients in order to compare the comparative uh, safety and efficacy of these two techniques. The study was conducted by collaborators at the three Mayo Clinic sites in Jacksonville, Florida, Rochester, Minnesota, and here in Scottsdale, Arizona, under the direction of Dr. Prasad Iyer. Uh, the time period of the study was from 2005 to 2018, and in any case where dysplasia or intramucosal adenocarcinoma was ablated, these diagnoses were made by an expert GI pathologist. Now, the goal of therapy in all cases was to achieve complete eradication of intestinal metaplasia, which I will hereafter refer to as CEIM, um, and this was defined in our study as the absence of intestinal metaplasia on two subsequent endoscopies at least three months apart. The primary outcome in this study was uh, adverse events at three months after the first circumferential ablation treatment. Secondary outcomes related to treatment efficacy. So we looked at outcomes like percent reduction in the PROG classification C and M lengths of Barrett's esophagus, the number of treatment sessions, uh, the time to and rates of complete eradication of dysplasia and IM, and the uh, length of the uh, procedure time. Uh, the specific statistical analyses are outlined completely in the manuscript and I would encourage you to go there for the specific details. In total, we analyzed 318 patients, of which 28% were treated with the self-sizing system and 72% with the manual sizing system. Uh, in terms of the baseline demographics and clinical characteristics, the self-sizing cohort was more likely to have a baseline diagnosis of low-grade dysplasia or indefinite for dysplasia. This can likely best be explained by the non-contemporaneous nature of these two systems and uh, the self-sizing system release coincided with uh, information that had uh, come out in studies like the SURF study uh, and uh, updated Barrett's esophagus uh, guideline recommendations uh, for ablation of low-grade dysplasia, uh, likely resulting in this higher proportion of low-grade dysplasia cases. Um, accordingly, because the manual sizing cohort was more likely to have high-grade dysplasia or intramucosal cancer, at baseline, uh, these patients were also more likely to have previously undergone EMR. Uh, now, treatment with both catheters in terms of the primary outcome was quite safe. The adverse event rate in the self-sizing system was 8.9%, and in the manual system was 5.7%, and these were not statistically significant differences. Uh, stricture formation was by far the most common adverse event, uh, and all of the strictures were fortunately successfully managed with endoscopic dilation at a median of two sessions. Now, when we look at trends of stricture formation, uh, it's notable that about 75% of the strictures in the self-sizing group uh, occurred in patients receiving the 12 joule ablation dose compared to the current uh, standard of 10 joules. So what's uh, notable about this study is that uh, upon release of the self-sizing uh, ablation catheter, the dosimetry really hadn't entirely been worked out until additional studies had come out demonstrating a higher than expected stricture rate in patients receiving the 12 joule dosing. And therefore the dosing was then uh, reduced to 10 joules, which is uh, currently the standard for treatment with the self-sizing system. Uh, 
Now, additionally, 63% of the patients who developed a stricture uh, had undergone prior EMR across the groups. Uh, and this is consistent with a recent meta-analysis showing that EMR before RFA is associated with a 2.6-fold increase in stricture formation. Given the small number of stricture events, we were not able to conduct a robust multivariate uh, analysis, uh, but a univariate uh, logistic regression model showed that only Barrett's length by CNM uh, classification uh, was predictive of stricture formation, which is intuitive, uh, result in the need for more ablations and therefore a higher stricture risk. Now, when we turn to secondary outcomes of treatment efficacy, the ablation systems really performed quite comparably. So when we examine the results of a single session, there was no difference in the reduction of PROG C and M lengths. And although the median duration of follow-up was significantly higher in the manual sizing cohort, just by virtue of its earlier release and the time it had been out before the self-sizing system had come out, uh, a Cox proportional hazards model showed a non-significant hazard ratio for achieving complete eradication of dysplasia and CEIM. And in our time to event survival analysis examining rates of eradication, uh, there was no statistically significant difference uh, according to the log rank test. We did conduct several additional sensitivity analyses. So uh, there is some controversy about the definition of CEIM and therefore we redefined CED and CEIM as a single endoscopic session with negative biopsies. Uh, and there was uh, only one difference that emerged, which was that the uh, CED rate uh, uh, was uh, more likely to be achieved with the self-sizing system with this modification to the definition. Otherwise, the rate of CEIM was, uh, was not significantly different. We also restricted uh, our analysis to outcomes after uh, two years following RFA in order to uh, limit the impact of differences in focal ablation uh, outcomes. Uh, and again, we did not see a difference there. Uh, we also adjusted for baseline histology and Barrett's length, and again, no, no significant differences were seen in regard to treatment outcomes. Finally, we did examine procedure time and noted that it was significantly shorter in patients uh, undergoing self-sizing uh, ablation treatment at a median of 28 minutes versus 33 minutes for the uh, manual sizing device with separate uh, sizing and ablation steps. So our study was really the first to compare the safety and efficacy of these two uh, ablation systems, the manual sizing and the more recent self-sizing circumferential ablation uh, balloon catheters, we really noted no statistically significant difference in, relate, in relation to adverse events or to uh, treatment efficacy. Uh, and these findings support that these systems are really comparable in, in terms of both safety and efficacy. And the self-sizing ablation appears to offer uh, enhanced efficiency uh, without a cost of uh, safety or efficacy. Uh, it is important to note that this study does have limitations. By virtue of being a retrospective study, we could not control all of the variables. Uh, so uh, one of the areas that could not be controlled was the ablation dosimetry, uh, which, as I mentioned previously, was dynamic within the time period of the study. So initially, the self-sizing uh, ablation system uh, was a 12 joule dosimetry and then reduced to 10 joules where it is today, uh, in contrast to the manual sizing system, which uh, about 98% of the patients in the study received the same dose. Uh, now, we would expect that the, uh, the self-sizing system, by virtue of uh, initially giving these 12 joule doses, which were known to be associated with a higher stricture risk, would be predisposed to having a significantly higher stricture rate when compared to the manual system. But of course, we did not see that, uh, which I think supports the conclusion that these systems are comparable in terms of safety. We had only one bleeding event in the study in a patient who was receiving dual antiplatelet therapy. They had held their clopidogrel, but then uh, 16 days after the ablation, they presented to the hospital with evidence of upper GI bleeding. Uh, they did undergo an endoscopy and were found to have diffused mucosal oozing uh, and no specific endoscopic therapy uh, was applied. They were treated supportively and discharged uneventfully uh, several days later. Um, so uh, bleeding is a, an exceedingly rare outcome, uh, at least significant bleeding is an exceedingly rare outcome from RFA uh, with either of these systems. Uh, given that these were not contemporaneous cohorts, there was a significant difference in the time of follow-up. However, our analyses did not show that even accounting for this difference, that there was any difference in the uh, efficacy. Uh, and also it's worth noting uh, that we restricted our analysis primarily to the response to the first circumferential ablation. Uh, and so we would expect the biggest differences to occur initially uh, after the circumferential treatment. The focal treatments have not changed uh, in this time period of the study. Uh, and therefore uh, should not impact uh, the differences between these systems. Finally, uh, we did conduct sensitivity analyses uh, and the results were fundamentally unchanged. 
So even though we try to account for all sources of bias, it's possible that some bias, of course, remains. Um, but the manual sizing system is no longer available for use, and therefore these systems cannot be directly compared uh, in a randomized trial. So in conclusion, we demonstrate uh, that the self-sizing circumferential ablation system provides comparable safety and efficacy to the previous manual sizing system with enhanced efficiency and reduced procedure time. And we anticipate that future such technical improvements will continue to enhance the quality and efficiency of care for Barrett's esophagus patients. Thank you so much for your time and attention.